So finally, in the middle of the show, I just stopped the band. I stopped yeah. the show and I said, you want puppy love? You got puppy love. And I turned around to the band off mic. And I said, guys, give me a heavy metal version of puppy love. And the band said, yeah. And they call it puppy love. And I'm screaming, <laughs> falling on the stage. And everybody's kind of like, hey, Meryl would have loved that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, David Cassidy was on the magazines, Sean Cassidy, you had Bobby Sherman, you had all these other, but I never really knew them because I was always on the road rehearsing and stuff like that. Uh, and eventually, uh, I hope everybody takes this the right way. Eventually, that drove me crazy. Did it? Yeah. Because as popular as, as I was, as the teen idol on those magazines, when I grew up, and everybody else did. They kind of left me as yesterday's dinner. I was old stuff. But they didn't realize in their mind, and it's human nature, I grew up too. Yeah. So they're 18, 19 years old, and what they liked at 13 is kid stuff. So it took me a long time to, uh, to break out of that. And, and I think a lot of it had to do with everybody else was growing up, and eventually they, looked, they wrapped their arms around the past and say, yes, I used to like it. It's okay. I grew up. But an interesting dynamic takes place, and it happens to me too, or happened to me too, is that, you know, all that's for kids, you know, until we all grow up and we realize, yeah, it's okay to look back. And yeah. fa in fact, Puppy Love is the fourth song in the set list, and I treat it with respect. Mm -hmm. Because I used to, to get a cheap laugh, uh, I would say, you know that part, someone help me, help me, help me, please. I would stop the band and say, all the guys are throwing up right now. And we'd start again. And it would get a laugh, a cheap laugh. But something happened to me, James, years and years ago when I was, started doing Soldier of Love when trying to break into yeah, the yeah. new thing. And I didn't do Puppy Love in the set list because I didn't want to do, I wanted to get away from it. And the audience members, sing Puppy Love, sing Puppy. And it drove me crazy. So finally in the middle of the show, I just stopped the band. I stopped yeah. the show and I said, you want Puppy Love? You got Puppy Love. And I turned around to the band off mic and I said, guys, give me a heavy metal version of Puppy Love. And the band said, yeah. And I said, and they call it Puppy Love. And I'm screaming, <laughs> falling on the stage and everybody's kind of like, yeah. Meryl would have loved that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but then what happened is after the show was over, I was walking out the stage door to get on the bus. This, this, uh, this fan grabbed me and she said, why did you make fun of Puppy Love? And in a very cocky way, I said, well, it's my song. I can do whatever I want to do with it. And then she said this. You may have had a hit with Puppy Love, but that song was a, uh, was a big part of my childhood memories mm -hmm. and you have no right to mess with my memories. Yeah. And she was right. And I stopped and I realized, no, this song doesn't just belong to me. It belongs to everybody else. So wow. I treat it with respect. It's now. one of those songs that you hear it and it just takes you straight back to that summer, summer of 72. It got does. Number yeah. one over here. Do you remember? Was that a big deal for you when it got to number one? Of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> you bet it was. But in the UK. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When, you, when you get a number one record, uh, it's kind of like, wow, this is awesome. And then later on in my life, I realized, well... It's a little bit harder to get a number one now, you know. Is it was a little bit easier back then. I kind of took it for granted. Yeah. Uh, but we were having one number ones right and left, and um, but then then everything dried up, and I realized, okay, I got to restart. I got to reinvent, and that's when I got into Soldier. Peter Gabriel was a very big part of. Yeah, of that no, whole I heard thing. about that. So this was this was in the eighties. End of the eighties. Uh, I tried and tried, and. I'll give you the full story. Yeah. 1983-ish. Okay, so in between, you'd gotten married, obviously. Yeah, married in 78. Yeah. And by the way, we're celebrating 45 years next Oh, month. congratulations. But in uh, around 83, is that when Thriller came out? Around 83? Like yeah. So Mike and I were talking, and he I was one of the first ones to hear Thriller. Oh, I was going to talk about that. Yeah. It, it was <laughs> unbelievable. And I turned to Mike. I said, Mike, how do I get back on the charts? And he said something to me that just offended me. He said, Donnie, you got to change your name because your name, quote, your name is Poison. And I walked away. That was very offensive. Fast forward 1989. Um, radio stations all over the United States started playing Soldier of Love because they loved the record. Yeah. But they were afraid to say it was Donnie Osmond because right. the image and all that stuff. Mike was right. They, it became a hit record. And then they found out it was me because my name didn't get in the way. So the music spoke for itself. Michael was absolutely right.
I remember, yeah, the, the guys over at, at PLJ just played that PLJ, song. PLJ, yeah. Scott Shannon. Yeah. Yeah, all those guys. It was actually Lou Simon in Salt Lake City. He was the one that actually played it first. And then PLJ in New York. It was My manager called me because I was ready to quit the business. I yeah. was over here. I think it got 31 or something and fell off the charts. Virgin Records, uh, they were, it was on Virgin at the time. They worked really hard and nothing really took off because my name got in the way. But uh, when Scott Shannon played, it was, uh, this is a mystery artist and we're not going to tell you who it is. So my manager <laughs> calls me. It's 1988, Christmas of 88. He says, Donnie, I got some good news and bad news. I said, I don't need any bad news right now. Give me the good news. He said, the good news is you have a hit record on the number one station in the number one market in the United States. I said, what? What could be bad news? He says, nobody knows it's you. <laughs> <laughs> ah. And then uh, they had me fly in in a very clandestine way. You snuck me into the building. And, and for two weeks, they, they said, uh, the mystery artist is going to come in and reveal who he is. Big drum roll, drive time, okay, in New York City. Mystery artist, who are you? James, I was really hesitant to say my name because I didn't want to kill the request. It was the number one requested record. I said, I'm Donny Osmond. Do you remember the phones that we used to have where the lights would blink yeah, and you yeah. hit the button? Yeah. Okay, they had a, a bank of phones with that. They all started lighting up. Wow. And it was from that moment on, uh, I just didn't look back. It just, I have all the different stations, the P1, P2, and P3 station, uh, areas, they, they did the same thing. And it just took off. <laughs> This is gold.